So can we activate a target's network of thoughts and feelings without their knowledge? It's interesting. This is where subliminal advertising comes in. People have been discussing this for decades. Can we actually some way affect people by some kind of subliminal input without them being aware of it? And of course, as you know, subliminal be means below threshold, like below the limit of what we can actually. This is subattentional. And the thing is, our detection of sentences gradually gets worse and worse. So people have tried during history to apply different techniques. Some of them are fuzzy images. There should be a large image where part of the image shows something. And actually what it shows should make you feel a specific thing. It could be brief exposure you're unaware of. Or it could be sounds or, or hypnosis or stuff like that. So fuzzy images first. It's classical Coke, um, Coke commercial. Does it look like, or is it, is it unintentional or is it on purpose? that it looks like she's doing something sexual. And how does it affect us? Does it affect us at all? We just look at this picture, do we get the feeling that, oh, it's really nice if I'm a guy? What about symbolism? Does this work? It'll blow your mind away. You also see the word and the symbol and the picture showing something different. Of course, here it's very much on purpose, but still, does it work? Because you know, a lot of these influence principles work even though we are aware of them. What about subliminal advertising? Could we, for example, do like this KFC? And you have to, it's a very, it's a short commercial, you have to be very fast. Okay, so be ready for the snacker. Hey, uh, I'm the dollar in your couch. Can you bet? You sure? It's a dollar. It won't give me anything these days. You can turn that dollar into a KFC snacker. What? The snackers only know your bad sense. And it comes in buffalo. Honey barbecue? Mm -hmm. Ultimate cheese. Mm -hmm. Today, I am a wealthy man. So why aren't you giving my dollar back? Thanks for being here. Big taste, big variety, small coin. The 99 cent snacker is at KFC. Grab 99 cents. Okay, so how does a snacker make you feel? Do you really feel like having a snacker right now? Okay, how many, if you see a dollar right now, how many think about a snacker? How many of you would think about a snacker? Come on, anyone? Yes, yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's all the guys. <laughs> Uh, I can eat in this morning hour, oh, uh, yes. No, was there a subliminal sign here? Did you see it? No, you didn't. Maybe you were actually affected without your knowledge. Maybe right now you have been, we have made some kind of trigger point. So every time you see a dollar, all you guys, all 40 of you, um, how many you are, are gonna, next time you see a dollar, you can say, oh, I wanna buy a snacker. Does it work? I know, did you see the dollar in the lettuce? <laughs> because you have the opportunity of seeing it once more. Hey, I'm seeing, huh? Hey, I uh, found a dollar in your couch. Can you bet? Can you share? It's a dollar. It won't give me anything these days. You can turn that dollar into a KFC snacker. What? The snacker's only 99 cents. And it comes in buffalo. Honey barbecue? Mm -hmm. Ultimate cheese. Mm -hmm. Today, I am a wealthy man. So why don't you give me my dollar back? Thanks for me. <laughs> Big taste, big variety, small coin. The 99 cent snacker is at KFC. Grab it and go for just 99 cents. KFC. Okay, so they're putting a small dollar sign inside the burger. It must be some kind of trying to make the two things fire together, like cells that fire together and wire together. So kind of making the link. So next time you see a dollar, you would want a KFC snacker. A little weird. So this is again the idea that uh, things happen together. What about the old, old discussion about this? Uh, but about this, look at the picture. Look at the picture. Yes, look at the picture. And of course, this is much slower than in the original studies. How many of you saw the blinking Lipton tea? Yes, all of you. 
But if you do it 10 times that fast, you probably wouldn't be aware of it. And then you ask people, how much would you like to have an ice cold Lipton tea? And what they actually do in these studies is that they give this brief exposure and then they uh, ask people, uh, they go out and they give them an opportunity of buying different things and you see how many actually buy Lipton tea. So the idea, there's a lot of controversy about these studies. Um, the effect is kind of discussed a lot, I think. The Lipton tea experiment done in 2006 worked if people had already activated thoughts in that direction. That is, if you blink and show Lipton tea or drink Lipton tea, it works if people are already thirsty. If you're not thirsty, it doesn't work at all. But the effect is debatable. Most of them and the studies is done under highly controlled laboratory conditions. It's like the right illum illumination, the right distance to the screen, there's no interruptions and stuff like that. If you were actually sitting in a cinema, what, you know, waiting for watching a movie, people, we don't really know that. And it seems kind of unethical to try to do this because what if it actually did work? And I think actually it is illegal now. So there's no evidence that subliminal messages can actually get people to act counter to their wishes, values and personalities. And I think that's very important. If you don't like Lipton tea, you won't suddenly start to think, ah, I need Lipton tea. You can't turn people into zombies like that or into weird, you can't do that. But of course, you might be able to affect the direction people are already going in.